Is justice whatever brings the most pleasure to the most people? Let's consider. Hello philosophers, I'm Chico. Welcome to The Philosopher Show, where we consider the greatest questions of human history. Recently, we've looked at the philosophy of justice for Plato and Aristotle. Today, we'll make a huge leap forward to the 18th, 19th century to see what philosopher Jeremy Bentham thought of justice. And he's going to be sort of our representative for classical utilitarians. And utilitarians in general, really, and, and just like consequentialist theories of justice, uh, the, the range of what these guys think is humongous. For a, an understanding of the ethical theory of consequentialists or, or classical utilitarians, I should say, check out my video on that and um, that'll start you on your way. Now, Bentham is a hardcore empiricist and an empiricist believes that all knowledge begins in sensation. And now you could believe that and also believe that uh, you know things beyond your senses just by you know, different uh, methods. But he doesn't believe that. He believes that you can only know the things that you sense. And in fact, the, only the things you could talk about are the things that you can sense. And anything else, any language that you have that is outside of the things that you can sense has got to be reducible to things that you can sense just just to perceptions and so uh, one of the things that he believes that you could perceive are pleasures and pains and when it comes to talk about what's good and bad the only things that he believes that you can perceive are pleasures and pains so there is no such thing as good and bad or rather good and bad is just shorthand for pleasure and pain pleasure is good pain is bad and that's as simple as it is. There is no real good and evil. There, those things are, are just shorthand for pleasure and pain. So uh, Bentham holds to ethical hedonism, which says that what we should do is to um, avoid pains and uh, do things that produce pleasure and not just in ourselves, he is an egalitarian, and he believes that what we should do is to contribute to the aggregate amount of pleasure, right? Like, since pleasure is the good thing, we should just contribute to the overall pleasure in, in throughout all human humanity and to reduce the overall pain throughout humanity. And he's also a psychological hedonist. He believes that that just happens to be what we do, right? We do that anyway. It's what we should do, and it's what we do do. And speaking of justice, that is what the legislator should do as well. The legislator should come up with laws that focus on increasing the overall ha happiness. And happiness is just a shorthand word for pleasure. Should increase pleasure and decrease pain and that's all the legislator should do it should i should say there are secondary uh things that the legislator should focus on like security but those things are all subservient to pleasure and pain right those are all things that are only good insofar as they um, contribute to increase of pleasure decrease of pain so in general, that's what the goal is. So he is a hedonist. Um, that's something that not all utilitarians are. You can change what your goal is, what the good is. You could think that the good is well-being. You could think the good, is, you could have a pluralist account. You could think that there are multiple things that are good for human beings. But for Bentham, it is pleasure versus pain. He is also, a, again, a utilitarian. So his focus is on utility, not on the intention of an act. The intention of an act is totally worthless. When you, it comes to evaluating what we should be or should not be doing, he doesn't care about what you intend to do or don't intend to do. That doesn't make an act good or evil. What The only good or evil is in the amount of pleasure or the uh, amount of pain, the amount of pleasure it produced or the amount of pain reduced. That's the only thing that we should evaluate 
our uh, our judgments on and the same for the legislator well we make our laws we should make laws just worried about what are the end results we shouldn't worry about anything else we shouldn't worry about are these laws you know with the right intention in mind forget the right intention in mind it's solely a matter of are they going to produce more pleasure and reduce more pain for all people well then good now in ethical utilitarianism it's impossible for an individual to calculate uh, exactly what the results are going to be every single time right you you won't have the time so let's say you know i'm i'm walking down the street uh and i have a dollar bill in my pocket and I can either give it to a person that is homeless or I can give it to a struggling business or, uh, you know, I could spend it on gas money to get me to my job. I got all these different things that I can use this one dollar bill for. Um, what is going to increase the ultimate happiness? That is a hard question, right? And do I have the time? to sit there and think about it every single time. Uh, in my actual, in my video on ethical hedonism, I think I was the, do you stop at a red light when there's nobody around and it's the middle of the night? Um, and if you sit there and you have to think about, should I stop? You know, like there's nobody around and it's gonna take you a long time to, to calculate the happiness of you saying there or, or you you running the red light versus the uh the pain of you having to worry about a speeding tick you know like the the calculation that's going to go into it is going to, to be such that um it will be too much for each individual decision so it seems like we have these uh the the issue that this kind of a, a calculation of what is going to produce the most happiness uh, to the most number of people is going to be uh, something that is totally impractical and this is going to this isn't going to work but bentham says we don't actually have to do that every single time instead what we can do is follow general rules there are general rules that are going to make you happier they're going to increase the happiness for all so don't sell drugs is a general rule is there a case where there might be you know like selling drugs might actually produce happiness like let's say there is a, a shortage of some kind of prescription drugs because of some apocalyptic you know <laughs> I, I don't know, you know, like the, the a company that refuses to sell and you have to do it in the black market. Okay, maybe, you know, yeah, but in general, like don't sell drugs. That's a general rule and, and it works. That's what Bentham says. And for the legislator, so we're talking about justice, not the ethical side. For just in, in the case of justice, uh, a just state would make laws that in general, not having to calculate every single time so this will be impractical but in general would increase the happiness of the people or would allow them to increase their own happiness now let's actually stop right there before i get further into self-interest because that is something that's important in his philosophy um, of justice but um when i mentioned earlier the most happiness for the most number of people that is a principle that Bentham starts off with, that he feels that he needs to change eventually in his philosophy. He comes up with, he says, the greatest happiness principle. So the problem is the most happiness for the most number of people seems like is open to a, an objection, a, a damning objection, which is that um, the minority of people might have to sacrifice their happiness for the majority of people so um if the minority of people uh sacrificing their happiness for the ultimate majority uh would increase the overall happiness of the majority it sounds like 
that is, you know, like more majority, more happiness, minority, some pain. Sounds like you're going to get more happiness overall. Bentham says that's not how it goes. Like imagine you have um, everybody all together, break them up into a group of majority and minority, and then exclude the feelings of the minority altogether and just consider the the majority you've just lost all of the minority's pleasure that's a huge chunk right so no matter how much you increase the majority you've just lost so much in just losing the minority so he says that the aggregate of happiness has just experienced a loss not a gain if you, if you just cut out the minority and you just consider the majority. So Bentham says that we have to consider the happiness of everybody because the happiness of everybody will contribute to the overall happiness more than if we lost the happiness of anybody. Now I have to say, I still find this unconvincing and I know the utilitarians are constantly pointing out that, you know, how, how Bentham talks about this, but I still don't think he solves the problem because you can change the numbers. Um, let's say we have an entire nation of people who uh, would find pleasure in sacrificing just one person. So that one person dying, getting, let's say, brutally murdered um, would be would increase pain and lose all the pleasure of that one person. But everybody would be totally delighted in that right their their aggregate pleasure of an entire nation would increase dramatically it still seems wrong right it still seems like i don't care that the aggregate pleasure would increase beyond the amount of pain that that increased and the amount of pleasure that was lost it still seems wrong and it seems like the the problem persists even though you know even though we lost the pleasure of that one person still seems like because the numbers you know, of the entire nation, you know, or if you could, if you'd like to the entire world, let's say the entire world wanted to sacrifice one person and they would get a lot of pleasure in doing so. That still seems wrong. And it's, it seems like the aggregate pleasure would outweigh the pleasure lost from sacrificing that one person. So, I mean, it's possible. So it seems like the objection still stands. Okay back to self-interest so bentham thinks that the individual is the arbiter of their own interest they do know what's best in uh what their interest is and that sounds like oh this guy's going to be totally laissez-faire and for the most part he was free market and um the, the but that's a little deceiving because at the same time he thinks the government the, the it's it's the job of the government to determine what is because he thinks that although you know what your interests are you also are mistaken about what produces what what produces the most pleasure so your interests might be mistaken and um because of that it's the government's duty to determine what is it that produces the most pleasure and, and you know he comes up with a bunch of rules for what produces the most pleasure so he helps you along the, that route but then it's also the government's uh, job to determine what the interests are of the people and to try and sort of coax them into bring making the decisions that will bring the most amount of pleasure using their interests so they've got a really hard job right like they have to sort of uh do the work of of using self-interest of the people in order to um, coax them into producing the most pleasure and that's the kind of laws that they need to make now, interesting in the utilitarians in general, and in Bentham particularly, is their idea of corrective justice. So for corrective justice, they kind of throw out the concept of retributive justice. 
the uh, which is the idea of retribution or the idea of you know you do something wrong and some that wrong thing should be done back to you and that's kind of harsh because it seems that seems like something that has been around for ever you know that that we feel like if you do something then justice is that thing being done back to you in some way you know like you getting that being done back to you and we think um a lot of times that mercy is a good thing you know that you get mercy rather than justice but that justice would be you getting the thing but done back to you especially if you're non-repentant in in what you've done so they throwing out the idea of retributive justice is a, a big question mark but they believe that um or bentham specifically believes that the whole purpose of corrective justice is for deterrence so what what you need to do is to punish um only up to the point that you need to to deter people from further doing the same thing that this person whoever it was has done what they've done and he talks about secondary uh goals here like disablement um moral reformation and compensation but ultimately all of it needs to be subservient to the whole principle of utility does it bring about the most pleasure for the most people if so then you should do it so he thinks deterrence brings about the most pleasure for the most people so that's the primary goal of corrective justice that is almost all but i will say there's one more interesting bit about corrective justice is that he developed the idea for this crazy prison uh that they there are they exist today called the panopticon i definitely suggest that you look this up because i'm not going to have any visuals on it because i'm not i don't i'm a philosopher man i'm not an architect um but the idea is that you have like this circular prison and on like in an inside circle are all the guards and the guards can uh see all the prisoners but the prisoners can't see the guards so the prisoners never know if they're being watched or not so like they always have to like act like they're being watched they always have to act uh they always have to act right in other words because they never know if they're being uh, surveilled or not so uh it's an interesting panopticon right always being opticon always being watched it's an interesting question because it brings up the question that you know is is privacy something that you can give up that you should be able to just give up because you do something wrong you know or is privacy something that we think that um is is something everybody needs or i i don't know so it's an interesting let me know what you think in the comments do you think that the panopticon is a bad idea or a good idea that's all we have for jeremy bentham also let me know what you think about his theory of justice and don't forget to support this project in my Patreon page, link in the description. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, and I will see you in the next video. Adios.